so today we're going to see about analog Chebyshev filter design okay analog Chebyshev filter design particularly we are designing a low pass filter okay we are going to design a low pass filter uh, previous sessions we have seen about how to design a butterworth filter okay so there will be slight variation with respect to Chebyshev filter in Chebyshev filter again we are going to see a type 1 filter okay so type 1 Chebyshev filter okay so directly we'll start with a sample uh, problem and along the problem we'll see the different formulas that are required okay so uh, in a particular problem uh, the given specifications okay so first I'll give uh, write what are the specifications given in the question okay so first they have given about alpha p that is the passband attenuation it is around 3 decibels similarly the stop band attenuation is given stop band attenuation is around 16 decibels okay and apart from that they are given pass band frequency pass band frequency is around 1 kilohertz and stop band frequency is given as 2 kilohertz so these are the specifications given in the question okay so first step uh, we need to uh, for our calculation for all our formulas and calculation we need four parameters okay so we need alpha p alpha s omega p and omega s these are the four parameters required alpha p and alpha s are already directly given but omega p omega s is not given instead you are given with f p and f s okay so you can calculate omega p omega p is nothing but 2 pi into f p so 2 pi into 1000 which gives you 2000 pi radians per second okay in the same way you can calculate omega s also omega s is 2 pi into fs fs is 2 kilohertz so you multiply you will get 4000 pi radians per second okay so now we have all the values omega p omega s alpha p and alpha s okay now we'll go to the second step so step or uh, first step first step uh, we have to identify the correct parameters okay so that is your first step second step second step you have to find the order of the filter you have to find the order of the filter okay so uh, for Chebyshev filter the order is given as n is greater than or equal to cosh inverse of square root of 10 power 0.1 alpha s minus 1 divided by 10 power 0.1 alpha p minus 1 the whole divided by cosh inverse of omega s by omega p okay so now accordingly from the question we have uh, the different parameters I'm just substituting it square root of alpha s is given as 16 dB okay so it is 10 power 1.6 minus 1 divided by alpha p is 3 dB so it is 0.3 minus 1 okay so the whole divided by cosh inverse of omega s is 4000 pi and uh, omega p is 2000 pi and if you solve for this you will get 
nine one four. So we have to round it off n to the nearest uh, highest integer. So n we are taking it as two. N is two. Okay. So second step we have calculated the order of the uh, Chebyshev filter. Okay. Next step. Step three. Step three is we need to find the poles of the transfer function. Okay. To find the poles of the transfer function in your uh, uh, Chebyshev, it is given by a cos phi k plus j b sin phi k. Okay. Where phi k is equal to pi by 2 plus 2k minus 1 by 2n pi where k runs from 1 to n. Okay. And again, uh, this is the value of phi k. We need to find what is a and b. I will give you the formulas for a. a is equal to omega p into nu power 1 by n minus nu power minus 1 by n by 2. Similarly, b is equal to omega p that is your passband uh, radiance frequency nu power 1 by n plus nu power minus 1 by n by 2 okay uh, to calculate uh, a and b again we require another parameter called nu okay so nu you can easily find it out nu is given as epsilon inverse plus square root of epsilon power minus 2 plus 1 and epsilon is already we can get it from the question directly in some cases and other things once the alpha p is given we can calculate 10 power point to 1 alpha p minus 1 okay so this is how you have to calculate so we'll start with the calculation so first we'll cal uh, first we know alpha p so first we'll calculate epsilon then we'll calculate nu then we'll calculate a b then phi k finally the poles okay so first we'll calculate the epsilon value so epsilon value is given as 10 power 0.1 into alpha p alpha p is 3 db minus 1 okay so 10 power 0.3 minus 1 uh, if you actually calculate it will come around 0.997 we can round it off to 1 okay then we'll calculate nu nu is equal to epsilon inverse plus square root of epsilon power minus 2 plus 1 so since epsilon is 1 it is 1 plus 1 so we'll be getting 2.414 okay so accordingly we can calculate a and b a is equal to omega p omega p is nothing but 2000 pi into 2.414 by 1 by n here n is 2 okay 1 by 2 minus 2.414 power minus 1 by 2 the whole divided by 2 if we actually calculate this value just keep the pi as such so you'll get 9 10 pi similarly we can calculate b b is again the same formula only difference instead of that minus you're going to have plus so 2.414 1 by 2 plus 2.414 minus 1 by 2 by 2 so if you plus it you'll be getting 2197 pi okay so we have got this one we have got the values of a and b okay now uh, we'll substitute these values in our sk sk is equal to 
a cos 5k what is a in our case a in our case is 910 pi cos 5k plus j what is b in our case 2197 pi 2197 pi sin 5k okay this is our equation now we have to find 5k so 5k is given as pi by 2 plus 2k minus 1 pi by 2n where uh, k takes the value 1 up to n so in our case n equal to 2 so you'll have only two poles so 5 1 is equal to pi by 2 plus k equal to 1 so 2 minus 1 is 1 so it is pi n is equal to 2 it is 4 okay so pi by 2 plus pi by 4 so you'll be getting 3 pi by 4 similarly the second pole phi 2 is equal to uh, pi by 2 plus k equal to 2 if you substitute 2 2 is a 4 minus 1 3 So you'll get three pi by four. So if you add both this, you'll getting five pi by four. Okay. So these are the two values I have to get. So accordingly, I can calculate S one is equal to nine hundred and ten pi cos three pi by four plus J two thousand one hundred and ninety seven pi sine 3 pi by 4. So if you solve for this, okay, so you'll be getting actually minus 643 point 46 pi plus j 1553 point 5 pi. Okay, this is my S1. Similarly, we can calculate S two. S two is nine hundred and ten pi cos phi pi by four plus j two hundred and ninety seven pi sine phi pi by four. Okay. So if we actually calculate it, it will get six forty three point four six pi minus J one five five three point five pi. Okay, so what you can observe here, both of these are complex conjugates. Okay, so if something comes mistake, we can easily check it. So S one and S two we have got. So this is our step three. We have got the poles. So in the last step, we have found the poles. Okay. So now we'll go into the fourth step. The fourth step is finding the transfer function. Finding the transfer function. So transfer function is nothing but h of s. H of s will have numerator as well as denominator polynomial. Unlike the Butterworth, which had the denominator alone, here we'll have both. Numerator as well as denominator. Okay, so what we'll do is that first calculate the denominator polynomial. So denominator polynomial we have two roots. Okay, so the first root is minus six forty three point four six pi plus j one five five four. Okay. One five five four pi. This is my first root, and the second root, s minus minus six forty three point four six pi minus j one five five four. I'm just dropping the decimal points. Okay, so this uh, we can couple together. We can write it as s plus six forty three point. Four six pi. You take this minus inside; it becomes j one 
1554 pi similarly here also i am taking the minus inside it becomes it's 43.46 pi plus j 1554 pi okay so we need to cut off 15 so 1554 pi okay so 1554 pi so when we have uh, a kind of a minus jb into a plus jb it is nothing but a square plus b square so s plus 646.46 pi whole square plus 1554 pi whole square so this is my denominator polynomial okay we have found the denominator polynomial so the next step is finding the numerator polynomial so the numerator polynomial actually depends upon the value of n so n can be an odd number or n can be a even number if n is odd okay what you have to do is we have to take the denominator polynomial and substitute s is equal to 0 whatever we get is nothing but the numerator polynomial on the other hand if n is even like our case okay we have to take the denominator polynomial substitute s is equal to 0 and divide this result by square root of 1 plus epsilon square okay whatever the result you are getting is nothing but my numerator now for our case for our case n equal to 2 okay so to get the numerator polynomial what you have to do take the denominator polynomial so what is the denominator polynomial s plus 643.4 pi whole square plus 1554 pi whole square okay this is the denominator polynomial this i have to substitute s equal to 0 and divide the entire result by 1 plus epsilon square for our problem we have calculated epsilon is 1 okay so if you substitute these values you will be getting 1 4 square into pi square okay that is my numerator polynomial once i know the numerator polynomial and my denominator polynomial i can easily find my transfer function so my transfer function is 1414.38 whole square pi square divided by okay if we expand this part so we'll be getting s plus 1 uh 287 pi s plus you add all the constant terms together so we'll get 1682 square pi square okay so this is my final h of s okay so these are the steps you have to follow to design an analog type 1 chebyshev filter particularly a low pass filter